Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? It is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is week zero. We're prepped. We're ready to roll. Let's jump into this bad boy. On today's show, Florida versus Miami. Previews, picks. We're doing actual winners. We're doing spread winners. We're jamming that that sweet tune. You got to love it. All right. So we're talking Florida and Miami. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six incredible sports books down there. You can find more information about those along with everything else that they're doing down there over at tunicatravel.com. Do yourself a favor. Go get informed. You can find out more about us at winningcureseverything.com. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. And you can follow the show at Winning Cures, or you can just find everything over at winningcureseverything.com. YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc. Hit subscribe, share the show out. We appreciate your support. Let's fire into this. Florida, minus seven and a half. Juice is minus 110 there on both sides. Against the Miami Hurricanes. This is uh, this Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. It's at Camping World Stadium in Orlando. The total is 47 and a half. You want to open us up? Tell, tell me what you think about this before I, before I start doling out facts. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I'm going to contradict facts. I think, I think I'm expecting this to be first game of the season. You got a new head coach on one side. First time real head coach. Oh, yeah. I mean, technically it's his second job. but um, he, First one he's had longer than a, a couple of hours. That's right. Um, <laughs> I expect this to be I, – I know that this number has gotten bet down and that's scaring people away from the under. I expect this to be an insanely low-scoring game. I think, A, both of these teams are better on the defensive side of the ball to begin with. And – I just don't know that Miami's offense, redshirt quarterback coming into the game, first big start like this against the athletes on Florida and Florida's defense that they're going to bring with them. I just have a hard time thinking Miami's going to score a lot. Did you know that Florida only has 73 scholarship players? Now, that's not going to matter in game one. I just found it It, interesting. It's going to matter with depth. Yeah. Um, But that that won't matter until November, basically. The, The... and so, so that's, that's the way I feel about that. And same thing with Florida. Now, Dan Mullins, hell of a coach. Felipe Franks, plenty of experience. Yeah. Not, not a red shirt, not a, not a, you know, not a freshman. Got, got plenty of game time under him. And Dan Mullins, a, a kind of a QB whiz. But, man, the, the defense on Miami's side of the ball is just nothing to sneeze legit. at. They the linebacker core legit. might be the best linebackers in the country. And... I just think this is going to be – it's also the first week, right? It's opening week for both of these teams, the first game yeah. they've played against real live competition. I, I think that the mistakes are going to be made more on the offensive side of the ball than the decent defensive side of the ball. I think it's going to be low scoring. I think I'm going to definitely go the under. Now, this opened Florida minus eight, and then the total was 50 and a half, and it's dropped down to 47 and a half. So – you so, and I have had this conversation off air. We'll go ahead and have it on air. The first week lines, massive line movement doesn't scare me at yeah. all because Vegas is still trying to learn these teams, and you've got two months to bet these games. Yeah. And if you pop a wrong number out there, which 50 and a half was just a wrong number. Now, it could still go over, but yeah. it didn't mean it was the right number, obviously. and I mean, the market has said this is, this is the right number. We've had two months of people betting it to, exactly. to, to get us the most efficient number. I just think that massive line movement doesn't scare me. No, no. Uh, let's talk about some of the facts here. Florida, number 15 in blue chip ratio talent. Miami, number 16 in blue chip ratio talent. It's, uh, it's a little crazy. The state of Florida is not hurting for athletes. No, not at all. I mean, dudes everywhere. Uh, these are, so there's only 16 teams that have a greater than 50% blue chip ratio. And what that is, Bud Elliott over at, uh, the Banner Society actually 
does this out, and it's just done by a recruiting class. It, yeah. it doesn't involve transfers, anything like that. Um, so it may not be completely accurate for Florida, but looking at recruiting rankings, this is a four-year span. What is their ratio of blue chip, which is four and five stars, to the rest of their roster? And that's where you get this number from. So Florida being at number 15, Miami being at number six, they're basically the same. Yep. But it is those are the teams. You, you basically have to have over 50% to win a national championship. So you could feasibly say that these are two national title contending Well, I mean, Florida's teams. ranked in the top 10. Yeah. I mean, they are, they are seen as one of the big boys that's absolutely live in this thing. Well, and Miami was preseason top 10 last year. Yeah. And did the same thing. Thing that that could happen to Florida this year, if any of this stuff goes haywire, right? So Florida loses four offensive linemen from the offense that only averaged. And here's the deal: last four games of the season, they looked unbeatable. That's right. right. They they whooped Florida State, they whooped Michigan in the bowl game, and it looked like all was right with the world. Felipe Franks was on a different level. I was just about to say he stepped his game up to a. A completely different level. That's what I expect That's, under well, when Dan Mullen's coach well, team. And also when you're playing against lesser competition, right? So well, Florida Michigan's State, defense was not lesser competition. Yeah, but when you think about who didn't play in that game. Doesn't matter. Those I guys, know I, but, those guys reload. I understand they reload, but but they didn't they were they were Georgia Latin and I know I know that Michigan fans, really Florida fans, Florida fans and Texas fans don't want to hear this. Michigan after not making the Big Ten Championship, after not making the playoff, going into that Ohio State game and absolutely blowing it, did not give a crap about that bowl game. They didn't care. But well, I mean, you could tell now, that Florida on the field. cared. You could tell by the yeah. way by and, the way that team played. You're and right. Georgia did the same thing. That's right. Um, so they they didn't care. Florida State was so done with that season. I don't think oh, they yeah, necessarily that was, cared. Well, that was a disaster of a team. So those were two top twenty defenses. Was Florida, Florida State a Florida top State, 20 defense to, last year? Total defense. They were a top 20 defense. How the defense. hell did that happen? Crazy. Now, as far as efficiency goes, uh, not so much. Yeah. But uh, Florida did play five other top 20 defensive efficiency teams last year. In those games, they averaged 16.6 points per game. And Felipe Franks averaged 14.6 out of 27.8 passing for 160.2 yards with four total touchdowns and four total interceptions. He That's played not good. He played awful against That's not top good five at defense. All. It, his numbers against Missouri, against Georgia, against LSU, against Kentucky, against Mississippi State. They just ran the were, ball over LSU. Were putrid. Yeah, he looked bad, but they just ran it down our throat. And now you're going up against a Miami team that had the number four defense in the country last year. Oh no, they're, yeah, this and their this defense, defense line is, is right. their defensive line is absolutely legit. Uh, the question here is, can Jaron Williams move the ball? That's Miami's redshirt freshman quarterback. Can he move the ball against Florida's defense? I don't think they're going to ask him to do too much in this game because I think they feel like they might be able to run a little bit on Florida's defense. It, it's basically. Two offenses that don't want their guy to make the mistake. That's what right? I think. I think they're going to be not just I, – I think they're both going to be conservative. Yeah. Well, they both understand if, if you win this game – It catapults you to a different level yes. before the rest of the – and you get, a, you get a head start because everybody in the country is watching this game. Yeah. Because come week one, there's going to be 90 games played, and you can only watch so many. Exactly. This is – Everybody's watching this game. Florida, 3-3 three and three against the spread as a favorite against Power 5 teams in 2018. Miami, 1-4 and four straight up as an underdog the last two years. I just can't look at those numbers. It's understandable, especially with Miami because... The team coach. is completely different. Yeah. yeah, the coaching staff is totally different, and the team is different. I am going to side with... Now, the reason I'm looking at all of this is I'm trying to figure out do I do I pick Miami to pull the upset? And I don't think that I can do that. I still trust Todd Grantham too much, especially against a redshirt freshman quarterback. But I do trust Manny Diaz's defense against Dan Mullen's offense because they know each other exceptionally well. They do. I think this is a low scoring game. I I would stay away from the total because it's it's dropped so much. I know you're gonna play the under. Um 
But I, I'm going to take Miami plus the seven and a half. But I'm taking oh, I'm Florida. Taking, I'm taking my. I'm taking Miami also in okay. the points. Oh, I'm absolutely taking whoever's now, catching points in a low scoring game. Absolutely. Are you taking Miami to win? Yeah, I'll take the upset. I'll take the dog. <laughs> sure. Here's the deal: if it goes over, Florida's going to win. Florida's going to cover. If okay. there are points to be scored, it's going to be by the quarterback that that has plenty of reps yeah. and has done this, and the head coach that, A, is an offensive play caller. It, I'm not calling him an offensive genius, but he's a hell of an offensive coach. Yeah. And and he just makes dudes better. And it's just, it's going to be Florida. So I, if you think it's going over, then you bet Florida to win, you bet Florida to cover. Yeah, I, okay. I think there's a chance that the only touchdown scored in this game could be on the defensive side of the ball. I think we're going to have a lot I of could, field goals. Yeah, I could absolutely see that. I think we're going to have a lot of field goals. We're going to play this game between the 20s. I like it. I like it. All right, that's going to wrap up today's show. Of course, go over to tunicatravel.com. Check out everything about what they've hap- uh, what they've got happening down in Tunica, Mississippi. Go and check out winningcureseverything.com. We appreciate y'all checking out the show. Share it out if you would. Leave some nice five-star reviews and hit that subscribe button. We will see you again tomorrow. Podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.